Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. I hope you enjoyed the previous video on 3800, 3880s from Epson and the ability for the modification of the original cartridges for refilling. Um, yeah, it's not a universally 100% working method for some. It has worked for me flawlessly for the last several years, but uh, doesn't seem to be that way any longer. But anyway, let's go ahead and change the subject. Um, Keith Cooper of North Light Images in the UK. This is the guy that gets delivered every brand new printer there is as far as photo printers. And he gets to do these very complete and beautifully put together reviews. He was just recently discussing the Pro 1000, Pro 2000 versus P800, P700. And these are all printers that he has reviewed himself and they were talking about what is optimal print output. Well, really, there is no such thing as optimal print output. Everyone who views a print that, you know, comes out of the printer has their opinion. It is all so subjective that you cannot really set a, a list of achievable uh, goals for print quality because it all depends on the viewer. It all depends on the user. Um, often I hear, well, the Pro 100 or dye ink printers produce prints with more pop, more snap. Sure, they're transparent inks. That's why. And pigment inks produce a duller look. That was the very first complaint with the old Epson Stylus Photo 2000 came out years and years ago. It was dull compared to the currently available at that time dye printers from Epson. Well, he went on to do note my use of the word optimal in quotes when I mentioned making some example prints. That's a custom profile and making fine adjustments to files for printing. What is on the screen is only a stage on the way to the final print. And the best looking screen image does not always match the image that makes the best looking print. Yeah, see, this is what I've been saying all along. It is not taking the same file and just printing it twice. Okay, people lose sleep, they lose hair. Well, I naturally lost my hair. I'm not a worrier. But they, they really uh, worry to death about matching that screen 100%, when in reality, it's apples and oranges. You're never, ever, 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 one more time, ever going to match exactly what you see on the monitor, period. Two different animals, okay? And I've said that at nauseum, I think the phrase is. So the best you can do, and this is what uh, Luminous Landscape folks, and these guys, this is their life, producing beautiful images and prints from those images. The print is the golden test, okay? It's like if you go for a medical problem and they run all of these little battery of tests and they produce vague results, but then when you go get that cardiac catheter done and they find a blockage in one of your arteries in your heart, that is the golden test. That's the one that is going to find if there's any problem in your circulatory system of your heart. That's the golden test. The print is the golden test. That output is what really matters, not necessarily if I go back to the screen and try to match it, will I say, oh, but it doesn't really match. But yeah, the print is gorgeous. And that's all that matters. You do your editing as best as you can, okay? And then you print. You will be close, 90 something percent, okay? If you have your monitor calibrated, using a great profile, you're soft proofing through that same profile so that you can make slight adjustments because it's going to simulate what the printer will produce rather than what the screen produces. And then you wait patiently or anxiously for the print to come out and you're not quite satisfied. Well, you determine, well, what do I need to do to change this to satisfy me? 
you go back and you make slight adjustments. I'm not talking about huge global adjustments. Sometimes it's not a matter of the print being bad, but that the post-processing I did was not optimal, meaning that I should have dodged here, I should have burned in here, I should have ran a gradient overlay so that I can darken my sky selectively. Many other control type effects that you can apply to your images has nothing to do with the ability of the printer to produce excellent output. The printer will produce that no matter what, but the look of your image has to be something that you saw in your mind's eye. So then you go back and you make those corrections. It's not that you're making corrections because there's such a disparity between the monitor and the output. It's not that. You're just making improvements to the image. You're optimizing that output. Again, remember, it's not that you're trying to go back and somehow play around so that you can match what you, you know, see on your screen. No. You're just trying to perfect what comes out of the printer. And once it comes out and I'm satisfied, I never, ever go back to the monitor. Never. So let's go ahead and look at some of these big 13 by 19s that I made here. And by the way, was with the... Um, Signature Edition inks, again, remember using the red OEM, not the red from Signature Edition, although it's going to be, uh, I told him recently that, you know, listen, you got the best ink set in the business right now, and you're never going to reach OEM levels with that red. You're going to reach a certain level, and only when you need that particular, reach out to that extended red gamut in your image, whether it exists or not, is when you're going to need your OEM red. Most of the time, your images will not need that sort of a high or ultra high gamut for the red zone of all of your um, images. Again, forgive me if I don't use the correct terminology. I'm not an expert in that subject at all. But so pretty soon, uh, he's going to go ahead and start bottling and begin to ship these inks and uh, at this point he's trying to resolve a little bit of a problem with magenta again nothing serious it's just going back to the lab and have them do something or other anyway so let's go ahead and look at these i decided to do a monochrome because i want to look at the tonality linearity of this ink set and as you can see to me this is an optimal print Okay, on video you can't see this, but in real life I have a black, I have detail. I have detail that I actually see in all of these zones down here. And it goes all the way up to almost white because why? I can tell the slight gloss differential right here. Okay, that means that very little ink was laid down, so it's probably, if this is 255, I probably got about a 252 in this zone right here. But everything else in between is beautifully depicted. I don't want to blind you with glare here. Overall application of gloss optimizer. It goes all the way to the limited edge of the printing because this is not done using borderless. But it's gorgeous, beautiful, neutral, and linear. There are no tonal changes in any of the grays from the darkest gray, of course, from the black, following the darkest grays, all the way through the mid-tones, and all the way to the brightest highlights. You can see the sun rays beautifully depicted through the foggy scene. Gorgeous. Again, black and white on what's not really their top quality paper. This is just semi-gloss paper that I got cheap. Remember those paper deals? Buy one, get nine years ago? This is how I got this paper. All right, so let's go ahead and put this down here carefully. Let me move that out of the way. I don't want to really ruin this nice prints. All right, let's check out the green gamut. So I found this image of what looks like a peapod halfway open. Look at the greens on this thing. Again, that's with this. So yeah, green is what? Cyan and yellow. 
in CMYK world. So cyan and yellow. And the darker greens, of course, also contain magenta because you can make gray with equal amounts of cyan, yellow, and magenta. So that's how you get the different densities. So magenta with the yellow and the cyan, predominantly yellow and cyan, makes that beautiful green color. And again, it's just gorgeous. Beautiful. It has, it has been able to duplicate the brightness and the saturation of this image's green overall color palette. Nothing to complain about there. Often when you switch over to a third-party ink set, you're you know, forced to basically accept a much lower color gamut, a much lower color quality or reproductive quality. And uh, so far, that has not been the case. Here's a shot that I actually use on greeting cards. I have many like this where it's just something beautiful, like a flower against a plain background. And so look at the oranges, look at the yellows on here. So this is where the yellow ink and the magenta ink comes into play, not the red. The red does not kick in yet on the Pro 10. Okay, the red is left out. That's why you have to have a premium working magenta and a really good working yellow so that when they are blended together by the print engine, you produce all of these different types of oranges. Again, if something was actually red in here, it would actually start to kick in more magenta. And then at some point, no more magenta is used and red is only used. That's why that red is so important but it's like an impossible dream it's so difficult to achieve i told him stop stop really you know wasting your time because you're just not going to achieve it and uh, concentrate on putting out your product how about that so we have here some cyan with a little bit of magenta this is going over toward the more optical blue color which is actually purplish again beautifully depicted neutral see the wall is neutral everything else correctly rendered pro 10 is one hell of a printer and if you saw the deal that i posted 99 dollars net i don't know if that's still available if you guys did not take advantage of that don't come back crying to me later that is one heck of a deal and unfortunately, that kind of makes me think that the Pro 10 will fall by the wayside very, very soon. So this is the time to get those Pro 10s. They're easily refilled, easily used. You can pop carts in and out without having to worry about ink lines. Yeah, great printers. If the printhead ever gets slightly clogged, they're easy to remove, easy to drip Windex right through it and clean it right back up. And of course, you can replace the printhead for about 120 bucks, which is you know more than the $99 net, but still not a bad way to uh, revive a printer with a bad printhead, unlike the more expensive printers that have $500 printheads, you know, or more. Can you believe these blues and purples? Okay, this is what you're trying to achieve. This is what you're trying to get. If your ink set cannot reach out and produce this kind of a deep, deep colors. In other words, they will fall short. And everything between a certain point to a certain deep, dark point just looks the same. Here you see differences. That means that even these colors were actually being able to be reproduced by this particular ink set. And of course, OEM can do that easily. What you're trying to do with a third-party ink source is you're trying to reach as close as possible to OEM performance. I don't know exactly how this goes. I think it's this way. It's an Apple core. Almost perfectly black background. There is a little bit of detail in these areas here, but it's almost a pure black background. You've got a little bit of reddish orange, the greenish yellow colors of the Apple. Again, all of these little nuances, all of these little color changes, tone changes, easily reproduced. Not bad at all. 
have a look. So at this point, I'm replacing the red, okay? But if I want a little bit more gloss, I will replace the chroma optimizer with one of these big carts I have over here. In other words, I will withdraw some of that chroma optimizer and use it to load my cartridges with it. And that will give me the gloss that I desire or the evenness. How about this? This thing is ridiculously saturated. Um, it's totally out of gamut. I mean, it's just crazy. And look at the results that I got with this. And again, remember, this is just semi-gloss. By the way, I uploaded my profile so that when you guys have this ink set and you're using it with OEM Red, you will be able to get results like this on semi-gloss on the Pro 10. Beautiful. I actually see a difference here between the two hills. There are different distances. This one's a little bit lighter. I can see the edge of this hill. Wow. Very good. Folks, if I wasn't satisfied with this, I would immediately tell everyone. I would have told Precision Colors, listen, uh, you just failed. But I just can't. At this point, I cannot. Here's a, a very surrealistic shot of a tree. I got this image, uh, most of these images from the internet. Uh, some of them are mine, but most of them are not. And then I went ahead in Photoshop and created all this mystique, this fuzziness to the image. But actually, it's quite sharp. But I love the way it came out. And I wanted to reach out to some of these weird yellow greenish looking tones and just to see how this could be reproduced by this ink set. And it did quite well, quite well. I love it. All the tree lovers out there, look at that majestic tree. Can you imagine that? I would have to uh, take a nice nap there like Rip Van Winkle. Wake me up in a few years. Not bad at all. Okay, I think we have just two more here. I wanted to test the ability of the ink set to reproduce these shades. Magentas, lots of magentas. These are reds. Then all sorts of variations of purples. And it did it. It did it. My curiosity, though, tells me that I have to test the actual signature edition red on this printer. But not yet. I'm going to wait for him to send me the uh, final red. Oh, two more. Okay. This is my shot, computer generated shot of that sky. Check it out, the blues and the greens. You can see canvas texture here because I turned it into a painting is what I did, this particular shot. And again, it, it, it's amazing. Really, I did not really expect this kind of performance. I didn't want to tell him, but I did not expect this kind of performance, but I'm a believer now, oh well. So my final image here, this is a, a standard image from a, a site that sells ultra-chrome type inks. It's very expensive ink set that they sell and not something that is very popular among home users. It's more uh, left out for the industry out there. And this is one of their standard images and I want you to see this. And this is the best test you can put it that inks it through because of the red. Remember, we're trying to reach those reds. And my Lord, look at these skin tones. Here, let me see if I can show you that. I doubt that I can frame this well enough for you all. But yeah, it's quite amazing. Really over the top, over the top. And yet, it is beautiful. If the red was not performing, of course I'm using OEM red, but what would happen if the red was not performing is that these colors would be more orange than red. And if I never show you the original image, and I told you that, yeah, that's supposed to be orange, you would accept it. The skin tones would be off, would not be quite as perfect as they are in this particular example here, using OEM red. So this would be a case where, yeah, you would use OEM Red rather than the 
signature edition red. But for most other images, that one of the blue sky and the green trees, sure, no problem at all. No problem at all. All right, that is it. Once everything gets finalized, again, you guys will be the first to know. Keep looking on the Precision Colors website. I'm sure once everything is ready to go, it will magically appear and you will be able to order these new inks. Now, let's talk a little bit about these 700 ml cartridges. Let me get myself set up here a little bit better. I really need to plan my shoots. So what do we have here? We have magenta. If any of you want to go this route, okay, forget about this, okay? Any one of you wants to go this route. Say you have a Pro 1000. We're not talking about the Pro 10 any, any longer. And you want to fill those Pro 1000 cartridges, which are, by the way, totally refillable. Precision Colors has chips, single use, and auto reset, okay? No, they have not been tested by me, but soon I hope they will arrive and I will be able to put them through the, uh, the test. You will need to buy 12 of these, one representing each color. That's a lot of money because this retails for almost $300 a cartridge. This is 700 ml. Divide that by 80 ml, somebody's mowing the grass. Divide that by 80 ml, and that is over eight refills. At a $15 chip or more, I don't know yet. And you get about a 30 something dollar refill with OEM inks. Everything will be OEM quality. Now, if you buy these, from a source that I'm going to provide very soon. You should be able to get them for about 220, okay? And if you go on eBay and you look around and you see this type of shape of a cart for whatever, I've gotten this one for 190. You have to be very, very careful because guess what folks? The 6400, 6450, the image prograph printers use cartridges that look just like this. But the inks are not the same. The inks are different, okay? That magenta is not the same as this magenta. We're talking about cartridges that have this designation. It will say 1700, or it'll say PFI-1700, and then a letter to match the colors, in this case is M. So the number for this card, PFI-1700M. That will work for this, okay? Let's check one more. This one says, PFI-1700R, red. So I have my red covered already, right here. And the other one will be CO chroma optimizer and I will be getting a blue one the blue is the other impossible color so in this case I will be using chroma optimizer red and blue and the rest will be signature edition that's it unless I get a good deal and I'm able to afford to buy all 12 of them that'll happen in about six months stretch of time because I cannot afford to, you know, plunk down 220 times 12 at one time. So I may go that route. I do not know yet, but from what I have seen with the performance of these inks and what I have here actually on print, I'm very satisfied with this ink set. Again, all we're waiting for, and I'm just as itchy and ticklish as, as everyone else waiting for this ink set to be ready, but they want to make sure that everything is correct and there are going to be no problems down the road. So patience, patience, patience is the word. All right, thank you so much. Whew. Let me go get some uh, 
cold lemonade or something because my throat is getting scratchy here talking so much. Thank you again. By the way, tomorrow we'll have the analytics for the month of September. And I have a feeling that my prediction, making it over $600 this month, will come true tonight. So I will be showing you that tomorrow. Uh, on another video, we'll try to come up with another subject. By the way, again, boy, I don't know when to stop talking. I bought a Logitech web camera, 1080p type camera. I'm trying to readdress doing live casts again. I got my OBS software working. I have everything calibrated. I just have to come up with a time and date where we can all get together and then we'll use Super Chat on YouTube and I will be able to answer your questions live. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Keep doing that. Watch my old videos. They're very informative and very relevant still. Playlists. Check out the playlist, over 30 playlists, different subjects. Watch a bunch of videos there too. And that way um, you will get answers to many of the questions that you already have or you may be asking me. You can go back and research my playlist because often that's where the answers are. I pretty much covered just about everything there is to be covered except something brand new that I haven't touched nor seen. So thank you again. Keep printing, guys. Bye-bye. Happily.